I'm Jesse Kohler. I'm an upland game biologist with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department, and I work mainly with grouse species out of Dickinson. The sage grouse in the spring, each, each year they're going back to the same areas to dance. So when a, a male gathers to his territory, they go to these leks. Um, the, the females are usually in the area and that's why the males pick these areas is because they're good nesting cover around the areas. And the males will do an elaborate display. They fill white air sacs on their breasts and then they take that air and they push it out their throats really fast making a, a popping sound. So they make interesting sounds and displays while they're, while they're trying to court females. Uh, the males are mostly black compared to other, other grouse, so they look, look really black from a distance with big white air sacs. So they look like a black and, black and white dot out on the landscape. Um, the, the hens are much, more, much smaller and they're much more gray. So usually the hens are harder to see, but they'll go come up onto the legs. Um, when the male's doing the right performance, the hens will be receptive and they settle down and let the males breed them and then take off. So one hen can, can be bred on a lek one time. That's enough to fertilize their entire nest full of eggs. Um, so it only, only takes them able to find one male on a, on a lek that's suitable for them. Um, and, and again, with our hybrids that we've seen, that's unfortunate that they're not able to find at least one, one male out here. The numbers had been declining for, for a longer term, um, but just pretty gradually. Around 2006 to 2008, the numbers dropped pretty precipitously, and we think it's because West Nile virus showed up on the landscape. Um, we did have some birds that were radio collared at the same time, and we did detect birds in South Dakota that had West Nile virus. Um, but there are a lot of causes. We've lost sagebrush, we've had fragmentation going in with oil and gas development and a lot of other development in their habitat. Um, sage grouse like great big areas of, of predominantly undisturbed areas of sagebrush and grasslands um, and we don't have a lot of that left in, in their core range. So in 2007 was, was probably our last peak of sage grouse where we still had over a hundred males dancing on all the, uh, all the dancing grounds or leks that we count every spring. Um, the population plummeted after that. We ha haven't had over, over 50 since then. So. Unfortunately, today we're down to two remaining leks that we know of. Uh, last year, there were about 24 males on those two leks. And assuming there's a 50-50 sex ratio, that might mean a, a spring population of around 50 sage grouse in North Dakota. Fall population with their, with their juveniles and the young of the year, we might have close to 100 total sage grouse at the peak in North Dakota anymore. Um, this year our preliminary counts have been even lower, so unfortunately um, the, the lek that we saw last year with 13 birds had about three so far. Um, it's early, so maybe we'll see more later in the season, but it doesn't seem, doesn't seem promising. And I know some people have, have termed the sage grouse population here on hospice, and I, I think that's probably an accurate thing to say. I think. The only saving grace we have is that Montana and South Dakota still have sage grouse connected to our population, so we could hope that those birds would source into our population. Um, however, last year, the last couple of years, um, their populations haven't been doing as well. South Dakota's now shut down their hunting season similar to us due to declines, and Montana's seen similar declines right across the border. Yeah, as far as hunting, I guess I'm pretty pessimistic that we'd ever see a, see a season here. Um, I guess you never say never because all wildlife populations go through, go through fluctuations, so sometimes we do see unexpected spikes. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem promising that we'll open our season anytime, anytime soon. The department hasn't sat by too idly. We've done quite a few things in the past to work with sage grouse. So, Starting 20 years ago or more, we had started some habitat projects. Um, about 15 years ago, we had done reclamation projects where we planted sage grouse plugs on a reclaimed pipeline to see if we could get sagebrush to, to get reclaimed in some of those areas. Um, we've done work on, with BLM primarily has done work on putting reflectors on fences, noticing that fence collisions were a source of mortality in other states. So we thought we could try to minimize that. 
Um, and then most recently, the Game and Fish invested quite a bit of time and money trying to translocate birds from Wyoming to North Dakota. Um, our hope was that we could, if the population decline was due to West Nile virus and they got below a certain threshold where they weren't able to reproduce anymore, that if we got back above that threshold, we'd, we'd be in the clear. Um, we brought over, uh, over 200 sage grouse adults in, in a period of four years and then additional chicks that we brought with broods uh, and it didn't seem like it was enough to get our population back to where we wanted it to be. It did seem like it slowed the bleeding but um, I think our, our lesson was that we would have needed to do yeah, magnitudes more sage grouse for, for many more years which we weren't going to commit to without improving habitat beforehand. The two active leks we have checked this year, um, both were down. The one that had seven or eight males on it last year had a couple birds fly by. There were no males displaying. And then another lek that had 13 males last year was down to, down to a handful. Um, might, have, might have been double counting, but three to five males this year. So unfortunately not, not good despite the mild winter and, and favorable looking conditions. Sage grouse aren't as productive as a, as a sharp tail or partridge or pheasant. Um, they definitely are more on the slow project, pro production, longer lifespan scale. So some of our life or some of our uh, wildlife produces really rapidly, produces a lot of young and dies really rapidly. Sage grouse are more adapted to producing fewer young, um, usually a nest of six to eight eggs might only hatch out two or three or survive two or three fledglings. Um, so, so those chicks are much fewer than a brood of pheasants or partridge. Um, and then the, the way they counter that is by having longer lifespans. So unlike partridge or pheasant that might have two or three year lifespan max, uh, we could expect sage grouse to have anywhere from five to seven years normal and, and up to over 10 years on the, on the landscape. So. The leading cause of mortality is usually uh, predation for, for a lot of the chicks, a lot of the nests are, are yeah, they'd, they'd all hatch out if it weren't for predators. Um, sometimes there's fertility issues in areas where we don't have enough males so the hens aren't being bred. Um, but for the most part, predation is the main reason that the nests don't hatch and the young don't survive. Um, and it's, it's a combination of predator numbers, but also just the habitat and the cover that needs to be there to protect the birds from predators. So. They've evolved with the predators that are here now, but, but with different cover to defend them against predators. Uh, the biggest thing they need is, is a grasslands with big sagebrush, so not silver sagebrush species, but the actual species big sagebrush. Um, and that's their primary diet, especially in the winter. They, they rely on that. They, in a good area, they can have as high a survival in the winter as they do in the summer. Um, and in our state, we probably don't have quite enough of that winter forage for them. Also, that, that same winter forage, that sagebrush plant serves as cover, so for predators, it's absolutely necessary to have, have the cover to protect them.